Welcome to the Really Useful Podcast. I'm Christian Corley and with me is Gavin Phillips and we are here to uh, unravel some of the uh, tech news that you might have heard to make them more relevant to you and to give you some useful productivity tips to help you make your useful computer, smartphone, maybe even a TV or games console uh, more useful. Peel away the pointless jargon and clear everything up for you. Uh, in this week's show, we will be looking at Disney's new streaming service, Facebook's portal devices, Amazon's printed holiday catalogs and what they hope to achieve through that. And we've got some tips for you as well, such as how to transfer data from a PC to a mobile device, uh, how to edit PDF files online, what Windows update bugs you might have experienced if your computer started acting weirdly, this could be because of an update bug. And uh, maybe uh, a little ta uh, chat about how the best way to get news on your mobile is. Uh, we'll also consider if, for a few moments how you can get paid to play video games, which is uh, quite exciting, isn't it? Uh, living the dream. Living the dream indeed. Uh, okay, uh, Gavin, had a good week? Yeah, very good week so far. A uh, bit of a restless night, as we talked about. Um, but yeah, otherwise, sun is almost shining, so can't Excellent. complain. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, kick it off then. Uh, Disney's new streaming service, uh, which is expected to launch in 2019. And, you know, we, li we live in a world of streaming services. We've got Hulu, we've got Netflix, we've got Amazon. There's probably others that I haven't mentioned. And Disney subscription streaming service is set to launch next year with some new shows from Star Wars and Marvel universes. Do we need a new streaming service, do you think, Gavin? Um, I think it depends on perhaps what you're a, a fan of. Um, you're a fan of uh, the the Marvel series and the Marvel films. I think the idea of a, a brand new Marvel series um, featuring Tom Hiddleston um, that's I think is touted it's going to be slightly different from the regular style of film. Uh, I think that's probably quite exciting. Uh, again, for the Star Wars live TV show. I think that's going to get a lot of people very, very excited. Uh, and there's talk of an as yet unnamed Star Wars project, I believe. Yeah, that's the Rogue One spin off, isn't it? Or prequel or something. A prequel, prequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, prequel to a prequel. <laughs> yeah, but that sort of um, programming is exactly what. Uh, Disney will need to actually take the challenge to Netflix uh, and Amazon Prime as well. I mean, they have a lot of decent original programming on there these days, so they're really going to have to step it up to prove the value to customers to take on what would really amounts to yet another subscription. So. Yeah. Do you know something annoys me about Amazon Prime, and I won't be alone in this, is when you, you, you browse through Amazon Prime, find something that you want to watch, you go, oh, wow, they've got this. Click on it. Oh, you've got to sign up to Netflix. Yeah, it's pretty pretty useless, isn't it? I've yeah, had that with, uh, with with four OD as well. Like, yes. Why, why is this here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I mean, it's obvious why they do it. It's just mm. damn frustrating to you know. This, I honestly don't think that uh, d does Amazon really need the extra affiliate money from Netflix. I don't think so. Uh, ask Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> ask Jeff, indeed. Ask ask the uh, ask the warehouse workers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that's that's what's coming from Disney. And uh, whether, I mean, whether you choose to subscribe to that really depends, I suppose, on how much you in how much you love Star Wars, how much you love Marvel, but also, I suppose, how much you love Disney, because you know this is a very different company to the one who 30 years ago could, couldn't find a decent animator and were, you know, when did they last, when did Disney last make a wildlife film on camera? Yeah, it's a good point, yeah. It's come it's a long, long way, isn't it? Sense, it's all yeah, yeah. digital animation these days and um, some great films in the last few years. But oh, yeah, sure. it's, a very, it's a very different beast, like you said. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that might turn a few people off, but uh, otherwise, Star Wars, Marvel, Tom Hiddleston, uh, you uh, might be uh, definitely signing up for that next year. Uh, now, Facebook have uh, had an uncharacteristically busy week. Um, they've announced the 
Portal and Portal Plus, a video chat service. Do you know the first video phone was released in 1969? Oof, really? Yeah. I was, genuinely didn't know that. It was quite expensive. Um, <laughs> then again, these devices are $199 and $349 respectively, so uh, they're not cheap themselves. They're available directly on Facebook, Best Buy and Amazon. Uh, you, you've uh, looked into these a bit, haven't you? Yeah, my uh, my show notes read uh, does less uh, costs more, um, and that kind of sums it up for me. Uh, I'm sure other people will feel differently, um, but it does amount to for me at least it's a two hundred or three hundred and fifty dollar smartphone replacement that sits on a admittedly quite a nice stand in your home, and it rotates quite nicely as well. Um, but why you would need it when it's highly likely you've already got an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone that can do the exact same thing without yeah. buying into a Facebook product that sits in your home. And, you know, you could use either an Amazon Echo Show or a Google-powered smart screen or other options that don't feel quite so Orwellian. And saying that they feel Orwellian in comparison to Amazon or Google is, is quite something. But, yeah, like I said, I do quite like the rotating stand. Yeah, it is. I, I, as a, as someone who likes to keep his wallet in his pocket, I, I absolutely do not see the need for a device like this at all. Uh, maybe you know, people with more cash and more space in their home might, but yeah, it just seems rather pointless to me. Uh, yeah, just stick a. Oh, there's, there's a phone here. Here's a, here's a tablet. Here's a tablet. Just stick it on a stand. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's quite simple. I just don't see the need for I it. I can't see it taking off, to be honest with you. And we're going to get adverts for it all over Facebook, without a doubt. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I imagine they'll push it quite hard, because they've obviously invested a fair amount in the hardware side of it. I can't see there being too much for the software side of it, though, because it's, it's just an extension of their existing platform into a, a web overlay, surely. It's... Yeah. I mean, it's it's not too, I suppose, not too dissimilar to... Amazon launching its own tablet, really, is it? It's a, it's a software company releasing a piece of hardware to encourage users to consume media through it. Media for Amazon's obviously shopping online and buying gifts and whatever, watching shows, uh, downloading apps, audio books, comics, etc., and books. And for Facebook, the, the media consumption is social media. Yeah, I guess if they sort of change their tact and start delivering more... Um, more actual live video and things like that, not uh, user created, uh, curated video. Um, if they start selling subscriptions to that sort of thing, because there was the Facebook TV thing going on in America for a while, wasn't there? Um, yeah. Maybe it's sort of paving the way for that being a more acceptable thing, and people might have to start dipping into their wallets to access content through it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So, um, yeah, you're going to see adverts for uh, the Facebook portal device next time you sign into Facebook and probably for months to come. And, you know, it's it's up to you whether you buy one, obviously, but whether or not you feel there is a need for it or not, uh, I think that's going to decide whether this product lives or dies. Let's move on to uh, Amazon themselves, actually. They've um, done a crazy thing and printed... A catalogue. What's that all about? What, I mean, what yeah, is I, that all about? I, I, it feels, <laughs> to me, it feels somewhat self-indulgent, like the, the first pang of a company that's about to throw it all away and go a bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, so you've got an organisation, a company, a corporation, the, one of the biggest in the world, which is accessible on every single device, either through an app or the internet, and they've decided to release a printed holiday catalogue. Uh, the suggestion is that it's been done in order to capitalise on the lack of a Toys R Us catalogue, and it's a toy-focused catalogue. Uh, but even so, it does feel just... But wasteful? Not... Unnecessary? Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary. Yeah, here's, here's, here's this uh, massive company. They have like, some questionable employment policies, um, some questionable um, use of packaging... Mm. Uh, and you know, we've all had devices this big that come in boxes this big and here they are um, printing on paper for free delivery across the United States yeah I'm not I'm not keen on it but 
Well, as Dave Parrick, uh, one of our Make Use Of colleagues, points out, this is Amazon's latest attempt to mimic bricks and mortar retailers, which is ironic, given that many retailers have gone bust thanks to the increased competition from Amazon. So it's sort of rubbing salt in the wound in some way. Do you know, I think, and you can call me revolutionary, but the best way to mimic something is to mimic it. <laughs> so if you want to mimic a bricks and mortar store, would you not just buy some bricks and mortar and some signage? Slap it together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> One on top of the other in a traditional yeah, uh, yeah. manner. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, so both uh, Facebook and Amazon seem to be uh, going a bit crazy this week. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, to some tips, I think, Gavin, because uh, all the, all this uh, news of uh, big companies waste, wasting money when they could maybe improve security or emp- em- employment conditions is kind of getting me down. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so transferring files, we've all done it. I think probably most of us still probably rely on a combination of email and cloud you know back in the day i was forever emailing things between work and home some of which i probably shouldn't have done (laughs) Uh, and uh you know everyone was using email as a kind of um file storage it's sort of a cloud storage you you know you you sent items was was your cloud storage uh these days it's a lot easier you've got um, bluetooth you've got wi-fi direct which is wi-fi between two devices or You've got cloud storage. Um, is, is, is it difficult to transfer data, do you think, these days? This isn't re- I can't see any reason why it should cause a problem for anyone. I think, uh, do, does it depend on the size of the file you're trying to yeah. transfer? Yeah. I, think, I think that's where people kind of have a sticking point. Um, at least that's when I run into problems sometimes. Uh, and it's... Android devices, and I stopped using things like uh, Push Bullet and uh, AirDroid and things like that when oh, they started introducing. Those, yeah. yeah, when they started introducing um, file size restrictions, you can't send yeah. anything over twenty five meg, that sort of thing. It just it becomes a bit useless. I mean, if you take like a high enough quality photo these days, it can be you know quite large. You can send one photo and then another photo and then another and so on. Um, so if you're copying a whole drive, your quickest way is still using a USB 3.1 compatible external drive, copying it over and then copying it again. Yeah. Um, however, I must admit, uh, I sort of, like you were saying about email, I still send files through Slack, <laughs> mm. <laughs> depending on the type of file and the size of it, um, just because it's easy and it's there and it's always open. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, there's so many apps these days as well. Uh, I've got the Samsung S8, and that's got Samsung Side Sync, which are, it's not brilliant, but it is handy enough that you can bring up the phone display on your screen and just drag the file off of it straight onto your computer, which is you know obviously very handy, very easy. Um, otherwise. People still use cables these days, surely? I mean, I always have a cable plugged into the computer. What about you? Yeah, I use... Uh, it's, it's not... I don't have one plugged in all the time, but I certainly have uh, cables close by, so if I need to transfer data, that maybe won't sync via the cloud, either because of sound... Uh, sound? Uh, because of file size or because of a networking issue or something, or Dropbox not loading, which ha- which is start happening on my Windows PC. Uh then yeah, I just uh, plug in because I mean, I, you know, screenshots and things from my phone, or you know, a video that I recorded for a, re- a video review, that kind of thing. I, I do wonder if a part of the problem is that there's no longer an appreciation for how big data is. I think we've lost as as um, storage has become smaller in terms of physical dimensions, and we've moved to towards cloud data i do think people are beginning to lose recognition of how much data is so you know a cd you could count as around 700 floppy disks mm, yeah um, a a DV- <laughs> yeah and a dvd will be about uh four times that again no no seven or eight times that again 
well, you know, now there's, you know, my 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 phone here has uh, sixty four gigabits flash card in it. Yeah, and you know, and it's the size it's, of your little fingernail. Exactly, <laughs> it's it's impossible to relate that in 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 real terms, really, because it's so small and yet it's so big. I think that that um, disconnect between the, the size and the capacity. I think that throws a lot of people, and that's why you end up with people trying to, you know, send send movies via email and bring in down, yeah. bring it down the the email service and things like that. Yeah, that's a fair assumption. Yeah, um, I don't think there's any way of getting around that though, as file sizes are just going to keep getting larger, aren't they? And larger oh, yeah. and larger. Uh, and with the kind of imminent sort of rollout of uh 5g within the next kind of year and a half two three years maybe that sort of problem is actually only going to increase because people are going to need more and more storage as they accumulate more and more data if the necessary networking speed is constantly available and constantly around us so yeah i think i think what you were saying is, is pretty accurate actually yeah yeah thank you uh so um, <laughs> there is a, this is quite a big subject so if you're looking for uh, some help on transferring files uh, there's a link in the show notes to an article at makeusoft.com, which will explain the best way to transfer files quickly uh, between PCs and mobile devices for your uh, for your for um, for pretty much any situation you've got you've got there. Okay, we're uh, we're we're ready to move on. I think, and do you know what? I think we uh, we should probably do this as well. Uh, is that that's better? There we go. There we go. That's uh, that, that makes it look like there's two of us, uh, instead of one of us and like a, a guy on a TV floating up here. Ah, there's two of us. <laughs> oh, blimey. I better stop pulling faces when I think I'm off screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, now PDF files. There was, a, there was a time where PDF files were everywhere, and you thought, well, it can't get any bigger than this for PDF because you know, it's surely if you can't edit it. It's it's not all that useful. It's useful for like instructions and manuals and may, maybe for making uh, web comics and things like that. Uh, but they've they've now started moving into this kind of uh, online signature area, where there's the kind of requirement to be able to edit, even if it's in that small just signature box. So I, you know, I'd be surprised if the PDF got any bigger than it already is. But there's a good case that anyone might need to edit a PDF or create one online or whatever. So I am under the impression that you might not be, Gavin, you might be able to uh, clear this up, but I, I still think people are not sure about how PDFs are created. I don't think people are, to be honest. I think when people are sent them, they get a bit irate because like you've mentioned, there's there's not always clarity about how you go about editing them. So people yeah. send them out willy-nilly because they do maintain the format of the document you want to send, which is why they are such a popular tool. But there's never any instruction about how to go about editing them once you've actually received the document. So yeah. people kind of sit there for a while and, and try and open it in Word and realise that all the dimensions have become screwed up or you can't click on it. Um, but to fill that gap, there are quite a lot of very useful uh, online, free online PDF editor sites. Um, I've used a fair few actually over the time because they don't always do what they advertise. Um, one of the best I've used is, is Paperjet, um, okay. which you can also see in the uh, linked article. Um, I've used it for non-confidential things. I have to go out and say straight away because I always think these sort of things, you never quite know what's going on behind the scenes. Sure. Anything with too much personal private information, you should be, well, in my mind, you should be using some sort of offline software. Um, but for quickly signing a document, Paperjet is, is actually really quite useful. So you should give it, give it a look. Okay, I think uh, the key thing about this is not that PDFs have kind of created a portable document format, that's what PDF stands for, created to save paper. And it's very easy to fall into that trap of printing out the PDF to sign it, to then scan it, 
and email it back. Which kind of def- yeah, we're, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it defeats the object, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> and, Did you have a preferred tool? Have you have you used many of the tools online, or you? I tend to um, I have um, a PDF app which I use from time to time. And I can't remember what it's called at the moment. But um, in terms of creating PDFs, I generally use Word to create a PDF. Yeah, it's so simple. Uh, you know, I mean, it used, it used to be the case where you would have a printer drive that would create your PDF, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is the alternative if you don't have Microsoft Word. But I think even LibreOffice will create a PDF now because Adobe obviously they made the PDF format open source, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very uh, easy done these days. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> it is it is the de facto portable document format that cannot be edited unless you have a particular need to edit it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's always clear that something's been edited in a PDF, isn't it? Uh, because of the nature of the original material, it's, it's, I mean, it's usually like uh, I mean that there is there is a a log, isn't there, in a PDF file? And there's mm-hmm. also um, like often the editing tools are create like an overlay over what's there, don't they? So you can see the original file still later on, even when the PDF has been sent on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I use uh, one called uh, Gaiho. Gai Gaiho, I think it's pronounced. It's G. Double A H I O PDF suite. Um, right. I can't remember how much it cost, but it was. It's definitely been worth the investment. It's an offline one. Yeah. Uh, and it comes with an actual uh, Word editor. Okay. And the the overlay is very similar to Microsoft uh, Office applications. It's not a Microsoft product, but it's very very similar, which makes it really right. really easy to navigate. And the editorial tools in there are quite easy to use as well so it's, it's worth a look i think there's a there's a free trial for 30 days which i think continues afterwards with slightly reduced functionality but it's definitely worth a look it certainly sounds really useful mm. uh thank you uh <laughs> so yeah pdf and I, I think gavin's um right in that um if you want to edit a pdf and it's only something small and you're not concerned about data being swallowed up by a faceless online organization then use a website but if there is sensitive information then it's smart to buy your own pdf editing software and do it offline okay windows updates uh we talked about this a few weeks ago <coughs> uh, there have been a few problems with the october 2018 windows update and basically we've um taken a look at make at make use of, of various issues and so a quick rundown of problems you might be experiencing on your pc since october where do you want to start Go on. well it's, <laughs> it's just the first thing isn't it <coughs> the your one. data might have been deleted uh, so okay yeah, it's crazy it's crackers isn't it we talked about this actual because this was the big thing a few weeks ago um this was the key problem and it was a problem that that existed back in February. It happened with the previous big rollout. So for it to happen again is just absolutely crackers. It's just, it, it defies um, all explanation beyond the fact that Microsoft uh, sacked its evaluation, its software evaluation team some years ago. It might have something to do with that. So yeah, you might have um, found your data has been deleted. If you use a HP computer, you may have a blue screen of death and that's not limited to HP either because it's also happened to Dell computers. Your brightness control problems on the Surface Go tablet, if you were one of the um, 12 people to own a Surface Go tablet, that might have happened to you. The zip tool uh, in Windows, there is a, there's a zip tool. Now, a lot of people don't know this. They just uh, tend to just install a zip tool. Uh, but there's actually one built in. And what happens is when you're unpacking something, if you're unpacking it into the same location, it will tell you that you're going to overwrite what's already there. Usually that's what happens. But since October update, that doesn't happen. And font substitution doesn't work. And that's a system whereby fonts that aren't present on a system are substituted with something that's at the very least uh, easy to look at. Um, That stopped working, which means some uh, older apps relying on Windows 10 to perform font substitution just display star symbols and crazy nonsense. Now, have you have you come into any contact with any of these problems? 
Uh, I haven't, luckily. And I was actually just uh, meandering through my mind there because I, I used the uh, insider preview. And I was just trying to think if I'd encountered any any of these problems on the insider preview. And I, I don't think I, but I read about them to great length, uh, especially the the blue screen of deaths, because uh, they were appeared to be happening quite frequently after the updates for PHP yeah. and Dell users. I read a few MSI users were, were getting them as well. Right. Okay. Um, is it limited to laptops then? <clears throat> Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, certainly sounds like it if it's MSI as well. Um, yeah. But then I, I have an MSI laptop with the insider preview, didn't have it, could be just got lucky. So, sure. All the people who did get them got unlucky. Uh, but, you know, it really shouldn't be happening in the 21st century. Uh, it, it, you know, Microsoft, <coughs> Microsoft have a history of bugs with Windows, and it isn't unreasonable, I don't believe, to expect Microsoft to do better than this. Uh, I have a HP laptop, which I'm very loath to uh, boot into Windows at the moment, uh, lest it proceed to download the update and apply it when I'm not looking. We talked uh, previously about ways to delay Windows 10 updates, and if you have experienced one of these problems, then it's too late for you, and reinstalling Windows or waiting for a fix would seem to be the best option. I, I understand some fixes are working their way out from the various manufacturers to... Uh, deal with the brightness issue, for instance, and the blue screen of death, but uh, and the font substitution. But, you know, it could it could take a while, depending on uh, various factors. These things always do take a while as well. Um, yeah. But it just, you know, as you sort of iterated on, it beggars belief that the manufacturers are having to scramble to make up for the shortcomings of Microsoft, <clears throat> pushing out an update so riddled with bugs it doesn't seem fair to the consumers or the device manufacturers to have to cover for Microsoft when uh, this, the Insider Preview program kind of plainly isn't doing the job that it was initially set out to do. Yeah. Which was bugs, so. Well, do you know, there's another thing to, to all this as well, um, and that is the, the major bugs that were discovered 12 months ago. If that didn't prompt Microsoft to think we need more people involved in testing our software, Surely nothing will, uh, you know, with the meltdown of Spectre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, processor bugs and how they've affected not just Microsoft's operating systems, but uh, you know, Apple's and the various Linux operating systems and some mobile operate, uh, some, you know, some Android devices also hit by it. So, you know, something like that comes along and Microsoft says, oh, it's all right, we'll deal with it. 12 months later, they're still struggling with uh, blue screens of death from their own software updates which are nothing to do with uh, those problems mm. uh yeah it's it's not been a great 12 months for uh microsoft support i don't feel listen um a lot of people use their phones for news uh reading the news getting updates sent to the phone possibly uh, you know if you're using android you, you may have uh, google now set up or your phone manufacturer may offer its own uh it's on it's on uh, it's on sort of news page i use uh, google um as a uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that that's uh some weird, weird stuff going on there but uh yeah do, uh, do you use your phone for news uh i do a bit yeah yeah um it depends what type of news do you do you find that it depends where you go and what what sort of device you want to be on or are you a uh... Well, so, um, solo to the phone for the news. I tend to use two things for news. I use, I, I rely on Google Now or this the Sony version of that. Sometimes I swap between the two. On my tablet, I use uh, I use Feedly. On mm, my tablet, yeah, yeah, uh, which is good uh, a good way to get news. My t my tablet also it's a Samsung tablet. It's um has this um thing called big b or bixby oh god yeah bixby. Uh, which yeah which i don't like at all well oh, it, it doesn't terrible. work it doesn't yeah it doesn't work in uh, landscape format for a start off which mm. is a big pain and it's not very configurable and the news it shows me doesn't as relate. a result of not being very configurable is largely useless and yeah. it's called and it's called bixby and it just makes me think of the incredible hulk tv series <laughs> so 
<laughs> uh, yeah, it's, there's, it's got a lot of problems. So I tend not to use that. But, you know, a few years ago, I was using a HTC One uh, M7. That was an Android device. And that had a really, really, really good configurable, easy to use news page yeah. uh, on the home screen that I could do anything with that news. I could read it. I could share it wherever. Yeah. Uh, I could dismiss it very easily. Uh, whereas, you know, it's, it seems to me these tools are getting less and less intuitive. There used to be a time where you could swipe news off off Google now, and you can't now. You have to press the little, the three dots, the ellipsis button, and mm. then choose hide this story. Rather, you know. As I find that sometimes the options behind the Google Now news feeds where you select, oh, I'm, I'm interested in this, I'm not interested in this. It doesn't actually always show relating to the specific story that you want or if you yeah. go through the menu options later you can't find an option to disable the news that it's showing you despite it showing it every single day or for a particular news source like mine was showing me i can't remember what newspaper i think it was the express for quite a long time i never read the express and i don't really care for the news from it but i couldn't disable it for months it kept showing me it every single day so mm. yeah, i did it take is... carry on no, no, please. I was going to say, I did take the uh, the Microsoft uh, News app for a little while, actually, um, yeah. in light of talking about it. And it wasn't bad, you know. I think, I think if you give it time, um, I guess it's a bit like Google now. You have to give it time to figure out what you like and tell it enough about what you like that it actually becomes applicable. Um but it could actually be quite useful. What I did like was the the dark theme. Um, dark themes are a big must for me for reading the news because uh, I tend to read it quite late at night, so I don't want it to strain my eyes. So the dark theme was a big, big plus there. Yeah, I tried the Google, uh, big fan, the Microsoft News as well. But, uh, I was um, trying out all the Microsoft apps on Android to see uh, how you know, how it went, how it felt. All that kind of thing. I wasn't again. I, I didn't find it was bad, but I didn't find I was enjoying it so much. But then again, I, I haven't enjoyed anything in the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the in the full page news feed app area for a long time. So yeah, I don't know if it's it does f feel as if it's becoming more and more controlled as well in terms of what material is displayed, which. You know, someone who 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 is interested in finding different viewpoints, um, that can be a bit frustrating. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Stymie is what you can look for, really, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to our last item, which uh, I, th I think some of you might have been waiting for. Uh, to be honest with you, maybe we should have put this at the beginning. Then again, maybe we should just um, leave the big stuff till <laughs> the end. Uh, you know, it might not be that big, but there are ways that you can get paid to play video games have you ever been paid to play a video game um directly no indirectly through writing yeah here's a video game i will pay you some money to write about it uh, if that counts then yes yeah same here i've uh, the best i've managed is to uh write some guides for some uh mmorpgs uh, a few years ago now yeah for, uh comparatively speaking a bit of a pittance but uh what can you do uh i, I wouldn't do it now <laughs> so certainly not no so um yeah this is a great article on make uh about how you can make money gaming and it lists five games that you can get paid to play now there's um there's three bundled together on steam team fortress 2 uh counter-strike global offensive and dota 2 uh, have, you, have you played these games? I've played yeah. Dota and I've played Team Fortress. I've never been a Counter-Strike uh, person. I've oh. sold uh, Dota and Team Fortress items as well as they right. just sort of appeared in my account over time. Uh, I didn't really get along with Dota. It's The initial years especially, it was a very, very toxic atmosphere to try and get involved in it. But the items that did appear in my account, I sold, I mean, for a pittance, but you know, it went into my Steam wallet and I put yeah. it towards another game. So yeah. it's worth worthwhile. Yeah. So wh wh where do these items come from? Uh, in Team Fortress 2, um, the sort of drops that happen around the various maps when you play it online. Um, and sometimes you get notifications about it 
Uh, and it depends on the map and the type of game and uh, you get different levels of rarity and and what have you and um, the same sort of thing in Dota 2 you can get awarded items post game uh, for your role within the game and that sort of thing uh, and I imagine it's quite similar with CSGO Okay, so these items they can be st- uh, sold through the Steam Community Market and as you say they get uh, added to your Steam wallet for uh, purchasing other games through Steam, they cannot be uh, withdrawn. Uh, it's not limited to that though. There are a couple of other games that have currencies that can be um, withdrawn. Yeah, the big one is uh, Second Life, isn't it? That was yeah. Well, it was it was a big one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of gone off the boil a bit. I know a guy um, James McLean who's uh, used to be a video game designer. He's uh, not these days. He does other types of work, but uh, he's um, he's done a lot of stuff in Second Life in uh, the the Doctor Who area. All oh, right, like um, creating TARDIS interiors and uh, oh, wow. exteriors as well. Yeah, he's uh, he's very um, atten- he's he has a uh, immense attention attention to detail when it comes to the design of a police box. Uh, mm. Let's put it that way. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So Second Life, that's one. And Entropia Universe, which was pr- previously known as Project Entropia, it certainly was when I tried it. Um, that has uh, Project Entropia dollars, which uh, exist at a rate of uh, ten peds per US dollar. I've not really um, heard of that one, to be honest. Not going to lie. Uh, well, they, they they can actually be withdrawn directly into a bank account. Wow. Whereas Linden dollars need a um, a, a, a a trading. Uh, exchange there's a currency exchange for the yeah. end of dollars in second life so that's some um, five games that you can play that, that you can generate real world cash from playing the other one uh was eve online uh where you used to be able to use the game's currency to buy your subscription yeah within the game uh but they sort of they devalued the currency which caused a little bit of an issue for some of the players who are using using it to fund all of their different accounts um but spaceships in eve go for can go for like thousands of dollars can't they yeah well there was a massive um there was a guy a couple of years ago wasn't there who like pulled off a massive scam in eve online and yeah it was like completely legal within the rules of the universe yeah that robbed everybody <laughs> yeah so that's uh, i mean eve, eve online is very much um a kind of, I mean, it's a popular game, but it's kind of very much a, a kind of a sci-fi niche world, isn't it? So yeah, it's, um, pro- yeah. yeah, it's uh, it, it yeah, it's a funny place. Uh, I, I have you played it? I've played it for a bit, but it's one of those things. I think you have to you have to grind to get into the good bits. Yeah. I think you have when, to give up life, don't you, to play even more? It does seem a little bit like that, and I've yeah. sort of ran out of giving up life to MMOs time, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's probably not your best bet. But something like uh, Second Life or Entropia or just some casual games yeah. like uh, Dota or Team Fortress 2 or whatever, um, they, uh, they, can, uh, they can pay for themselves, basically. Or they can certainly pay you for your time to some degree. And, you know, that can't be bad, can it? Oh, a bit of extra cash, new games, new items within game, elite, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's other ways as well. You could have live streams. You could create guides. Um, you could do podcasts or videos. Although, hey, I've not heard of a podcast that makes any money. <laughs> uh, uh, you could do uh, competitive gaming tournaments, um, rely on games journalism, mm-hmm. uh, even games testing. I think games testing is probably something that, you know, I've, I've known software testers and they, they don't seem to be very happy people. No. So, no, games testers that I've ever known are not happy people. No. It's not as exciting or as wonderful or mystical yeah. as as it sounds. Uh, it's it's quite it's quite crushing, I believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe stay away from that. But there, yeah, we'll uh, put a couple of links in the show notes for uh, things that you can do if you're interested in gaming. And you know, the Christmas break's coming up, so you know, if you fancy making a bit of cash while you're gaming, avoiding Christmas or whatever you're least Hi- preferred hiding from <laughs> seasonal thing is um then yeah that's uh, that's an option for you so check the show notes for everything that we've discussed in this week's really useful podcast we are here for you to um make everything 
clearer when it comes to technology. We live in an age where it's very difficult to escape from technology. And if things are not chiming with you, if you don't understand why things are there, you have no idea why Amazon is sending you a catalogue or why Facebook wants to sell you with what appears to be a messenger television. Uh, yeah, th that that's our job. We'll we break it down for you, explain it to you and tell you why you need to care or why you should just ignore it. Uh, I'm Christian Corley. Uh, Gavin Phillips has joined me in this show. I'll be back for next week's really useful podcast. Until then, it's goodbye. Cheerio. Cheerio.